<laughs> ah! Wait, wait, who's that? It was me saying, ah! Oh, nice. No, you can see. What? What's the problem? I didn't. I knew it wasn't me, so I'm like, is that a part of the song? <laughs> no, I said, ah! Ah! It's like, what has those secret hidden messages? Like, you can find me. You can over. play it backwards and like. Yeah. <laughs> it's find like some that movie, treasure. that great cinema, that great piece of cinema, Little Nicky, where they play Chicago backwards, and it's I love Satan. How um, how how topical for us to be talking about Little Nicky right now. <laughs> I'm being serious because you know who's in Little Nicky. Shemmy, right? No, Quentin is in Little Nicky. I know. I'm just fucking around. Oh, dude. I was like, are you really not like picking it up? <laughs> like, uh, like I hate Adam it's an, Sandler's it's, guts out. But like, it's an I, infamous I, moment. It is. It's terrible. I also don't hate Adam Sandler's guts out. I want to be clear about that. I, I'm more on the ambivalent end. I remember you hated when I sent you that my aesthetic was Sandler core. I saw that. Like, um, I hate that shit. You know. <laughs> it is true though. Like honestly, like fuck this like Tarantino beat we're doing where we see all of his, like his movies he's directed. We should watch every Quentin Tarantino movie that he's like acted in. No, no, no. no just kidding. No, because they're so would die. He has so many small parts and bullshit. It's not worth it. And he's bad in all of them. That's his face. True. Let's talk about full. P- Wait, right now. who are we? I we're Crosscut Cinema. I'm, I'm Franny. I'm I, Mila. Oh no! <laughs> I was trying to get in before you said anything. <laughs> <laughs> but now you're already Franny, and she's already Mila. Mila Kunis is here. If I'm in here and you're out there and he's in here, then who's <laughs> the, the caveman? caveman? Me. I'm the caveman. Hello, I'm caveman. <laughs> I hate us. I'm Uma Thurman's feet. It, mm. I mean, Quentin would love you. <laughs> That's not what I want. Just kidding. I'm Madison. <laughs> I'm still Mila. I don't know what y'all are talking about. Nah. Bridget's definitely not here, and it's definitely not her birthday. It's actually not. It's almost it's Bridget's almost birthday. birthday. I'm Flat well, Stanley. Oh, flat my God. Stanley. Yeah. Have you guys ever gotten a Flat Stanley? I've gotten I've, one. I've traveled the country and looked adorable while doing it. Wow. What is a flat Stanley? Flat. Wait, you don't know what a flat Stanley is? It's no. like a little flat dude that you mail to people. You don't know what a stat Flanley is? I met I friends know. while camping and they mailed me a flat Stanley. Wow. Wow. Right? It's pretty, oh, man. pretty cool. What's going on, If I hadn't on, already guys? made the thumbnail, there'd be a flat Stanley on that fucking thumbnail. I don't even, well, I don't even know what the thumbnail looks like. Oh, uh, well, either. people I listening know, to this I probably do. I know you do. sent it, but... It's like Mila's face on Uma Thurman's body. Oh, oh nice. yeah, I do remember that. Mm-hmm. Nice, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking I'm with about you, everyone who's listening right now. I'm with you. <laughs> what? What? You, you just look. said the people l- that are listening know what the thumbnail looks like, and he said, Which what it "Which isn't really like. correct because if you're listening on Spotify or other places <laughs> other than YouTube, anywhere you listen you to podcasts, we don't have a thumbnail. Yeah. It's just the it's just a little X." Yep, little X with the C and the C. It looks Three like, CP. Kind of looks like a polo like logo, like a golf shirt, but it's oh, actually it badass. Does. It's like purple. It's cool. Yeah. You check it out. Let's talk about full picture. Let's do that. I think okay. We got off to a weird start there. We did. I don't know what's going on. It's been a weird, weird time for yeah, everybody. Yeah, I think that's true. This is our last time in this studio, so I this know, is pretty it's weird. A bit weird. I thought our last one was going to be our last time, and but then, that's incorrect. Well, it would have been, but then you guys are like, I'm too tired to record full depiction, so we're going to go home. And I'm like, <laughs> fine, we'll go home. Well, but here we are. Well, say love here you. Together. Again. Yes. For the last also, time. Also, like, it's weird. Like, Wait, no, 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 we're not together. For- <laughs> well, what? No, no it's together for the last time in the studio. Yes, for the last time in this location. For the last time with that SpongeBob um, light oh switch cover. We have to take it. I'm taking it. that. Oh, you are oh. nice. Fuck are you yeah, for, I'm for taking real? that. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna Hell do my yeah. best. Good. I'm not not gonna try mm-hmm. to take it. <laughs> Fair enough. Are you able to like install it in your new place? Oh no, no, it will just it will just be in the corner. Great. You know, we'll I put, love that. We'll get we'll get an adhesive strip of some kind, maybe. What are those ones? The what are those one strips called? Command, command strips. strips. Command strips. We'll command Sponsor that. Sponsor us. Command strips. Yes, command strips. <laughs> Upwork hasn't reached back out to us, so if <laughs> <laughs> be our sponsor, command strips. <laughs> be our guest. Be our guest. Um, Not everybody messaged me on Facebook. Just you, command strips. <laughs> <laughs> 
Just kidding. Uh. Everyone message us on Facebook. No, no, no. The good people who message us on Facebook. Not not, <laughs> not the bad people. There are bad people? You never told me the bad people. We were people. talking oh, yeah. about it earlier. We there's were talking this about guy, just like randos. There's this guy. We'll call him Spinch. No, you know a Spinch. We'll call him Strawberry. <laughs> we know, we a, know spinch. a Spinch. We'll, we have a gecko named Spinch. We'll call it Strawberry. Strawberry. Strawberry is like, was, was a high school bully for me. Oh, yeah. And which always was like, you're fucking fat. And I'm like, I know. Like, stop. Like, don't remind me of that shit. I'm living in a in a world where I don't go by mirrors. And he would say things. <laughs> I don't own mirrors and then at he, all. And then he messaged me on Facebook. I saw your podcast. It's really popular. Can I go on your podcast? I'm like, no, you fucking chud. Like, everybody wants to be <laughs> on the podcast. The, the moment no. you have any sort of, like, even the smallest like success. Like, the littlest. Like, like, this is not even to say that we think that we're, like, hot shit. Because we don't, but... I mean, we well, don't. Medicine does, we're not but cold shit, though. No, I mean, we're like Luke. We're like room temperature <laughs> shit. We're not fresh, but we ain't frozen. <laughs> oh my God. Um, but yeah, no, like the minute you you get you get like even a modicum of like interest yeah. in what you're doing, like people start coming out of the fucking woodwork. I mean, it's like trying I'll, to get in on your. Sh- you're just walking down the street, dude. Pops up behind a tree. I listen to your podcast. I swear, I can't. Can I be on an episode? Can I be on it? That's not how that works. You're not on Joe Rogan's podcast because you like Ro Jogan. <laughs> you didn't drink any cum. You're not going to hang out with him. Oh, God. Oh, you have to listen to the Scooby-Doo podcast to have that make sense. <laughs> Joe Rogan's not soliciting random people to drink his cum. I That's mean, not he what's might happening. be. Like, we're not saying he's not doing that. <laughs> well, okay. I mean, you don't know what Joe Rogan does in his private time. I mean, what private time? He's a very public figure. What the hell does I he mean, do? I mean, I'm sure he goes home at night. Does he? Does, is he like? Is he scared of the dark? He's like, fear I mean, should not be a factor to you. And he <laughs> runs through his house if it's too dark. Yes. <laughs> Madison at the bottom of the stairs. And behind. <laughs> Correct. Oh, I just had like a hiccup. That was gross. There will be a discussion about Fult Piction here. Yeah, I, we fiction. should we should get yeah. into that. I'm interested in like. I've seen Pulp Fiction uh, like many times in my life because like I was edgy. Not not or edgy. I don't, think, I, don't think, I don't think watching Pulp Fiction makes you I edgy. Know, but you I just wanted to wear sunglasses. It doesn't not make you edgy. And yeah, <laughs> the same way that Joe Rogan isn't not soliciting people to drink <laughs> cum. <laughs> right, yeah. Me liking Pulp Fiction doesn't make me not edgy. Um but like I watched it, I watched it a lot because I was like, you know, on like film Tumblr in 2014, I guess. That young Tumblr film renaissance. Yeah, yeah. Uh. When like, well, Tumblr, like, if you know, you know, and if you don't know, you don't know. But if you know, you know, Tumblr had like a Tarantino renaissance in like 2014, and like we were all watching Reservoir Dogs like all the time, like together no collectively. Thanks. I mean, that's oh. cool. <laughs> but like. But uh, but because I, but she's I've gonna seen... hate snow reservoir dogs. <laughs> snow reservoir dogs in the cold. <laughs> yeah. What? What is that a thing? Oh, pretty much. It's snow dogs. Have you seen that movie? Q yeah. Gooding Jr. <laughs> yeah. He bites a fucking dog. That's uncomfortable. Wait, what? <laughs> the dog kept biting him. Maybe is I'm that remembering the Disney this. Channel one. Yes. Doesn't he bite a dog's ear? I have yes, no idea. Does. Or um, is this like, is this the result of growing up and not taking a moment to smell the roses? Where I thought. Maybe like a sheep was fucked by Jake Gyllenhaal. Or, <laughs> no, stop! Or a Don't dog. help me. <laughs> Somebody no in the idea. comments said it was in the in the in the uh, director's cut. They lied, baby. That's we well, have we gotten a hold of the director's cut? <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> you know, I've done extensive research that. though, and. Wait, you actually checked up on that? That's clearly was a troll. Like, so yeah, clearly. Yeah, like, obviously not. Like, Herb is not Cube's boy. Like, there's no debate. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> I just remember it very vividly, and I don't understand. Like, no, you don't. Like, you don't remember it because you never saw it. That's like what Quakers do. <laughs> they make you think. Wait, wait, is this defamation on Quakers? I mean, now that we have any success, I'm podcast. like, fuck. I don't want to say anything. You I don't know? care. I you welcome controversy. Fuck, Quakers. fuck the Quakers. Fuck, Qua- fuck Quakers. Fuck you and your. Actually, they blow dogs for quarters, dude. I found out it's actually an offshoot of the Quakers called something like Steak the Steak and Lube. No. The oats. It's the French Queer church. Oats? I said, fuck you and your oats, and nobody laughed at it. <laughs> maybe, I don't know, maybe it's better you. in the situation in which you just delivered it. Where I delivered a failed attempt to add to the Quaker, and then you made a successful one. Oh. You can't just be out here yelling oats and expecting people to laugh. <laughs> no, I said, fuck oh, you. Oats. I said, fuck you and your oats, and nobody. Well, nobody I was heard like, it. fuck you and your lube. Like, that's not a joke. 
whatever. Fuck it. All right. Um, All right. But what I'm what Pulp I'm trying fiction. what I'm trying to say. Full fiction. Is that I sh- I've seen this movie a lot and Same. like this movie is very much like representative of a certain time in my life when I was like wearing sunglasses and like Hawaiian shirts all the time and wearing contacts we about so that before, you right can... and yeah wearing contacts so I could wear sunglasses. Did you did you watch the Dreamberg cut? The what cut? There's a fan edit out there. I thought you might know this because of movie Tumblr. I've only seen it once, and when I try to look it up, I never find it. I've never seen it. They put everything in order for you to watch, so you can like kind of go back after you've seen the okay, actual movie. Okay, that's kind of cool. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. And you realize the end of the film ends so... It ends in such a weird moment, the film. Yeah, it does. It really does. It really, like, it ends pretty... I mean, and let, maybe... What's maybe the I'm actual strong. ending? Uh, technically, I think the ending is the Zed is dead line. I'm pretty sure that that's the technical ending. Yeah, let me... Let me huh. Yeah. I mean, that's like when the movie... That's the last chronological event. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah. And leading up to that, as a result of the way the movie shot, there are so many boring parts because there's so much oh, yeah. development in the middle, you know? Like, But because in the movie, the way it's... It's a great movie. This movie really likes to play with time and how yeah. it delivers a story. And it kind of was one of the first to really do that. And I mean, it doesn't take a genius to know that this is considered one of the best movies of all yeah. time by a lot of people. Right, yeah. But yeah, so like because this movie was is like so representative of like a specific period in my life and because I like am like intimately familiar with this movie uh, like i'm cur- what the fuck was that hello oats make that noise no like again. real life what was that I you bang something behind you, like no i no, thought I it did, came from over it came from over there here. okay that's fucking weird i don't know anyway but you i'm know. interested we openly admitted to the ghost that this is our last night in this room. Oh my it's god! Said, Let's <laughs> fuck it up. And they they were just like, "All right, we can't. All right, here we go. We can't do the paranormal activity style like building up to scaring <laughs> right, you. I wasted all my now. time, and you fuckers are <laughs> never here. So here um, we go, <laughs> flying televisions. That's why. That's probably why. Like when I'm here, sometimes between like shifts, when I work doubles, I hear a shit ton of noises like, all of the I goddamn got one. time. I got one. <laughs> yeah. Yep, like I in don't the like kitchen being specifically like up. Like sometimes I hear footsteps on the stairs. Like mm-hmm. not even. I love you around. showing me the stairs because like they can't see those stairs. Well, you're showing me all these you. stairs it's for you. You're guys. like literally like you're like the Price is Right. Like showing me like <laughs> you're like vanning all over uh. these man, these um not real stairs. I couldn't but, think of a word. Yeah, I like to yell at it. I'd be like, <laughs> do that again. It doesn't happen. You're just like oats, nice. oats, oats. Um, but like, I'm interested in like what you, Franny, and you, Bridget, like. Not interested. I mean, I've, I've, I've seen it, it before. What? But. No, no, I know, but like, you guys haven't seen this movie a bunch of times yeah. the way that like I have, and I think Logan has, and like Bridget's yeah. seen it once, and so I've I'm interested in like. Time. I don't know. I guess I just want to know like. Was this resonant for you? Did it like impact you? I don't know. Also, yeah. should we try to one more the question plot though. A little bit. Let or? me get one more question. Yeah. Well, if they haven't seen this oh, movie, true. I'm done. This is not it. This yeah. is because yeah. okay. you because the plot is purposefully hard to explain. Yeah, yeah. This is not. If you like, haven't seen this movie, go watch this movie. It's available pretty much on all pi- buyable platforms. Yeah, you can I mean, like see it anywhere. You can throw a rock and land on a. Copy you can probably of Pulp catch Fiction. it on TV <laughs> at some point as well. Like if you have cable or something. Go to like a Goodwill. They have it in their DVD section. You right. go to fucking and find, find anywhere. it wherever. Yeah, Walmart bins every across America. Yeah, you can fall, find Pulp Fiction <laughs> anywhere. That and Forrest Gump. You can find those two <laughs> movies Correct. anywhere. Um, yeah. But the other thing I want to know is there's so much like pop culture built into this movie how right. much did you guys already know was going to happen before even seeing it like how much were you like i was totally familiar with that even before i ever saw mm-hmm. it mm. i want to hear your take first since it was like your first experience with it okay so to start out with the pop co- pop culture uh question i really didn't know a whole lot about it I mean, like, do I you knew. mean like there's so much like pop culturally yeah, that like, we know about Pulp Fiction yeah, now? Yeah, like, okay, let's let right. me give you an example. There's a in, in Jimmy Neutron, there is a scene where they replicate the Vincent Vega and Uma Thurman like moment, like you know Mrs. Wallace moment, where they're doing like the dance with like the right, fingers yeah. over the eyes. There's so much of Pulp Fiction just spread in our throughout. pop culture. Yeah, like, like elements of it are repeated everywhere, either to be parody or literal inspiration. Like there's stuff in like for instance, Bad Times at the El Royale 
clearly Pulp Fiction is the right. reason that movie exists. Yeah, and I mean like, and I mean like that that shot of like Jules and Vince like aiming their gun and shooting at the same time like yep. that is yeah. all over the, the damn square. place. square. I mean her square. Yeah, her moment. doing her square moment. Yeah. Um. So I, I. <laughs> I mostly remembered the line, does he look like a bitch? <laughs> does he man- look like, why are you trying to fuck him like one? <laughs> what a great line. It's, it, it really that, is. That whole scene is incredible. Because um, as Madison re-showed me this video on Tumblr, and it was like them on from Greece, like, tell me more, tell me more. Did and you then, get very far? Tell me more, tell, tell me more. Does, does he, he look, look like, like a bitch? bitch? And it's like oh the best God. video. You yes. should like, if, if you haven't seen that video, you should pause this. Go search like Sam Jackson Greece. We can Sam link Jackson it in our Greece. description. Oh, we could do that. We'll leave if the it's link on YouTube, it'll be linked in the okay, description. Okay, yeah. So click that link. Go watch that video. Laugh at it, and then come back to us a little bit better than you were before. Bitch, what about the first set of people to ever even click on our on our description, dude? You know it's true. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you know it's true. Okay, now uh, companies, if you're out there wanting to sponsor us. Take a look at the at the, um, the views for that Sam Jackson Grease video, and then see if they go up. Like that could <laughs> that could point you to our relevance. Just, just watch right. Scooby Doo and Donny Darko the review, and Yay. then only look at that video, and that's how much <laughs> right, we always yeah. get. Yes, correct. Mm-hmm. Um, and 1917, we had it unlisted till just today. Right. Yes. <laughs> no. It, until about five minutes ago. Yeah. Why? Really. <laughs> Where was oh. I during this? So I Where have you been this whole time? <laughs> My brain is moosh. It's baby food. It's moosh. You used to um, eat baby food when we got together, and I it was something I had to overcome. Baby food. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> okay, I used to love those like squeezable tubes of baby food. You know Ew. what I mean? Like the pouches? No. The I don't. Guys, aren't I a king for Listen. sticking along with her after that? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm not even to the best part, but then. The best part? Listen. But then I saw on uh, Facebook that there's a picture going around where somebody cut open one of those tubes because their kid was getting sick and there's mold in the bottom. So I said, fuck that. And I stopped eating baby food. Gross. Yeah. I thought you just stopped being a baby. <laughs> That's why I stopped <laughs> eating baby I'm food. Not, I'm not pretty <laughs> French Junior. Oh my God. Stop. <laughs> you know how weird. Okay. All right. You know how weird it was to Google uh, royalty free baby image into Google? You know how awful that like looks in public? <laughs> Just nice. saying. I did a lot but for that yeah, thumbnail, people. I feel like I thought I forgot a lot more of this movie than I did, but then like cuz like I watched it last probably 5 years ago, 6 years ago. And um honestly, Mia Wallace was my high school inspiration. <laughs> I had the hair. I literally mm-hmm. had black hair with the bangs and that short um i don't know i feel like this movie like after you see it even if you just see it once it kind of like burns into your brain but it kind of doesn't always feel like coherently burned into your brain because it's not like the timeline's all fucked up you know yeah mm-hmm. so like i'd remember things and be like oh i like didn't even like connect that that was all part of the same movie mm. you know what i mean it makes yeah. sense yeah but um, i really liked it yeah again yeah, I mean, I, this movie... Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, you're good. I was just going to answer Madison's uh, Madison's question about whether it affected me, and the answer is absolutely fucking yes. But I love that. Continue. Same, same. I, this like, definitely, like, resonates with me. I like your it. mouth is nowhere near that microphone. <laughs> Why can't you ever hear me on the podcast? <laughs> um... I'm sorry. I mean, this is like the movie that really got me into like watching movies in a serious way. Like, like, you know what I mean? Like you watch Pulp Fiction and suddenly you understand cinema now. Right. Yeah. I mean, I guess I could hear what you're saying. You, you, I'll say this. It sparks an appetite in a lot of people. Yes. And I think that's what happened to me. Like I watched this and I was like, oh, like a movie can be this. And like, if you haven't seen movies like that before. That it's like, oh, like, this is what a movie can be. And so, like, this, like, Pulp Fiction, like, to its absolute credit, is, like, the movie that, like, got me into, like, thinking about film in a different way. 
Yeah, I think Tarantino was the conduit for me. It's like, if I didn't watch Tarantino, I wouldn't yeah, watch Anywhere it, 2. I wouldn't watch Hanukkah. Yeah, same. I wouldn't like, watch any you, of that stuff. And, like, it's interesting because, like, Quentin Tarantino is both, like, a gateway to older cinema because he is so he draws so much from it in like very obvious ways and also but also is like a gateway into getting into like modern indie and art film if that makes sense Mm -hmm. because like like i don't know it's just really interesting how he it's weird how has managed to be positioned in that like his films are just so entertaining that it kind of crosses that line of indie and also like something that's an event Yeah. yeah let's talk about some of the tragedy of this movie um, first of all, John Travolta's character was not written for John Travolta. It was written for Michael Madsen. Michael Madsen was not available to be in Pulp Fiction because he had scheduling conflicts to do some sort of Western. And, like, that's so... Like, I don't know. I Like, I don't dislike John Travolta being in this movie. Like, it does not... It does not upset me to any degree that John Travolta is there. But, like, imagine it with Michael hmm. Madsen. Like, or, I mean, or one degree the other option me that you might not hair. know. Um, so, here's the thing. Uh, obviously, he picked... John Travolta for Kiss of Saturday Night Fever and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you know who found the script and said they were interested and Tarantino shot down? Who? Daniel fucking Day-Lewis. Oh, my God. Daniel That's wild. fucking Daniel Day-Lewis. Day-Lewis done this. I feel like I just always keep my phone next to me to look up these people. Daniel Day-Lewis is arguably, like, one of the best actors of all time. Yes. I mean, he's incredible. He has five Oscars for good reason. He pretty much, whenever he's up for one, he's like, thank you, and he walks out. Yeah. Um... He liked the script. He reached out to Twin to, to Quinn and Twinton? Twin to Twin Tarantino's. Tweet tweet. And um, he was like, "No, I like John Travolta for this. I'm going to revamp his whole career," which he definitely I brought mean, it yeah. back. Like, I mean, after this movie, we kind of had like the second coming of John Travolta. <laughs> yeah, and it and it was awful. That's yeah, the other I thing. Mean, people yeah. people seem to forget. Um, Face Off was the second most popular movie around this time. That movie's fucking terrible. Then you got Wild Hogs. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait to watch Wild Hogs. <laughs> I mean... And now it's led all the way to The Fanatic. A fucking... Her- the movie's so bad, it's good. Like, it's horrendous. <laughs> I mean, like... I don't know, but then, like, the other part of me is, like, I can't picture this movie without John Travolta's stupid face it's, and it's soft, so iconic shitty body. Now, you know? Yeah. Soft, <laughs> shitty body. <laughs> it is. And oh, his I think fucking his hair. Just his hair plugged. is so hard to look at. Can you fix that, Bridget? Like, make sure Ouch. these are plugged in right. I'm having headphone issues, but it's I'm fine. of the opinion that since Michael Madsen had hair like that at the time, that they was always intended to have that hair style. I agree. Yeah. So, you can't blame Travolta for that. <laughs> yes, that's good. I don't know why this is like this is like something random that like never really like was even in my mind about Pulp Fiction but since we rewatched since I rewatched it the other day for some reason like every now and again I'll just hear John Travolta's voice in my mind saying I know baby you dig it the most (laughs) I don't know why I know baby you dig it the most man (laughs) <laughs> this is talking, they're talking about McDonald's, right? Yeah, they're, they're talking, about, yeah. they're Amsterdam. talking about how Amsterdam police yeah. do not have the right to search you. I know, man. You, you dig, it, dig the it the most. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've literally been hearing that in my mind, like, just occasionally. Well, you, well, you got to have an opinion. <laughs> that I always hear really that. Good. You always, you got to have an opinion. I mean, what did Ben, do you think that it was a sign from fuck? <laughs> I love that scene Yeah, so I love much. that scene. Like, I remember, like, watching... That's one of those things like you watch you're watching this movie and you just don't expect that to happen. Not no, at all. I literally Not gasped. I was like <gasps> like oh it's like what the fuck? He just shot Marvin in the face. <laughs> Poor Marvin on? too. God. I know. Like what did Marvin ever do? I mean so all right. So in regards to Marvin, we'll get back to that. I almost okay. I almost went so off page. So like something we gotta talk about later. That's fine. Oh shit. I mean, we can talk about it now. All right. So let's talk about. Um, no, I okay. We'll get to it. So let's talk about <laughs> all the insane theories around yes, this film. Yes, I love Pulp Fiction theories. A big one being all the people that went to Big Kahuna Burger that they broke into and shot were demons. What? Um, yeah, that was that's an idea that he that uh, Marcellus. Sold his soul, right? For happiness. This is the real theory. He yeah. sold his okay. soul for happiness. That's why there's a band-aid on the back of his head. Because they took the soul from the spine, which is like a voodoo lore thing. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, that, that is a... So, in they have the suitcase. 
And oh, he wasn't know. he wasn't happy, so they fucked him. He they so he sold them the soul, and they fucked him, and they didn't end up doing anything about it. They, they, he, they he didn't end up getting what he had sold his soul for. He was still an unhappy prick, so he sent old boys to go kill them. And then that also explains the whole like when he read him the that's that piece of the Bible, and the dude went to go shoot at him, and all of his bullets missed. Yeah. And then finally, like, the final righteous moment was when he literally blasted his ass in the car. Yeah, and, like, well, something that's always been, like, kind of interesting to me that I've been thinking okay? about. Are you okay? Bridget looks like she just saw, like, the universe for the first time. <laughs> no, I'm just processing what you've told me. Like, mm-hmm. what is this? That's, like, like, the first time I heard that, like, Crookshanks was, like, the potter's cat or some shit. <laughs> I, like, lost my goddamn mind. Wow. I what? am. It's just funny. I forgot, like, I hadn't heard that theory before, but, like, just, like, something in my mind felt very, like, deal with the devil-esque with, like, the suitcase and everything. And it goes even further, because if you look at, um, if you look at Jules and Vincent, well, Jules finally decides to live a holy path, and the very next job that Vincent has, he dies. Right. Mm. He fucking dies right away. Ooh. True. Like, I don't know. And then there's the... Weird I'm, not, I'm not saying this is no, the No, no, I was going to say, like, I don't... I don't... I don't watch Pulp Fiction and think to myself, well, in order to understand this movie, I need to figure out what's in that case and what the real thing is. No, but there but are I people who find, see it that way. Yeah, but I also find those theories, like, interesting. Like, I think it's, like, a fun little thing to do. But, like, ultimately for me, I don't need that element to understand this movie. And I would... I would go so far as to make the argument that that is left intentionally ambiguous. I mean, I think Tarantino has said as much himself, but I don't think that there's like, I don't think that there's any theory that like explains this film and like makes it, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think, I don't so, think that that exists and I don't think that there's any like right answer to the question. I think it could. I think, I think what could have happened knowing Tarantino is he wrote, he wrote a script, right? And he wrote a, uh, he didn't write the script out of order. That's what a lot of people don't know. This script is in order. Yeah, I mean that makes so sense to me. He could have wrote that narrative out, had that idea in mind, had some one of these theory ideas in mind. Mm. But what re- the film really became the film, it's when he went into the editory blocking and directing phase. The way the film's written, he could very well have had a hidden meaning just to get out a story. You know yeah. what I mean? Because mm-hmm. really, the way the film kind of like mystifies you, it's not like this movie is the grandstanding best written film of all time. It's right. just one of the best edited films of all time. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would definitely agree so, with that. And I would one also of the best agree directed with that. Movies. Yeah, and one of the best directed movies too. I, I wonder if there is a very clear cut thing that he wrote that he'll never admit, but just to get a narrative out. Probably. Yeah, well, and I mean, to admit it would kind of take away the magic of it. Absolutely. Right. Because, like, if you can just, like, Google what he said it was, mm-hmm. then, then, like, like there's what's nothing... the fucking point? I, I, like, um, I like a theory that, like, I, it's been a long time since I've read this, so, you know, I could be, like, mis- misrepresenting what this theory is, but, like, the idea that there are, like, divergent timelines happening in Pulp Fiction, mm-hmm. like, I don't think that, like, old Quentin sat down at the typewriter and, like, plunked out this, you like, weird... You think he wrote it on a typewriter? <laughs> Probably uh, yes, knowing him, he's such an asshole. Um, <laughs> he had he had a typewriter and he had a typewriter stick. You like, know, he it. did the most douchey thing he possibly could. You know, he was and he was like fucking chain smoking American spirits or something. He's like, wow, this is really turning out great. Oh God. <laughs> um, but um, what was I gonna say? But like like the idea that there's like these divergent timelines. I don't like think that that's the answer but i just think it's kind of a fun one and like i remember very clearly like it hinges on the little things that are different in that diner scene specifically like in the opening scene she says if any one of you fucking pricks move i'll execute every motherfucking last one of you's and then in the end diner scene she says i'll execute every last one of you motherfuckers yep i don't like like the fact that i know that that is like it like really shows my like film bro yeah i knew that too yeah i know but i mean like the film bro popped out oh for uh, sure do you think that was intentional yeah it could could be but it also like really it also could not be i mean (laughs) that shooting schedule was wild because they had to shoot the scenes in order and then scramble them so think about how much that goes because they can't afford to do the diner multiple times to go right yeah so they shot those scenes 
What probably happened is they didn't have another good take. Yeah, they probably didn't have and another good cut it, of it. You know? Like, yeah, but that left us with a quite a theory. Which he probably does. loves that that happened. He's like, yes. Yeah, that's probably Absolutely. like really... I mean... And because like uh, so much of the appeal of this movie is like you don't get all the answers for you, but it's still very satisfying. And then there's the anti-drug right. theory, which I was talking a little bit about before. This film could be anti-drugs because oh, what happened well. is Vincent went and did like a bunch of drugs in Amsterdam and did a bunch of drugs in the film and everything. Yeah. And they think that something that he did fucked up his system. And he's got like a urinary tract infection or he's sick. <laughs> yeah. Because every, right. every situation yeah. he goes to the bathroom. Like almost the whole fucking movie he's going to the bathroom. And he's the only character who yeah. really has that moment other than Uma Thurman who fucking blows coke up her Yeah, nose. she doesn't go to the bathroom to go to the bathroom. Yeah. She goes to powder her nose. Mm-hmm. Quote unquote. As she says. And I seriously wonder. I mean, this is just a wonder. Um, do you think that there were so many scenes of him going to the bathroom that John Travolta's like, we have to reshoot this one because we can't have him go to the bathroom every fucking time. Like, <laughs> like, like I'm honestly wondering if like she originally did like a coke line off the table or something. Uh, right. Because it's just so strange how in every other scene he's going to the bathroom. I, I, mean, I, I get I get that it's a coincidence, but it's just really funny when you think about it like that. Right, like, so, but also he like dies in the thing. fucking bathroom. Like he literally dies in the bathroom. Like Elvis is that you? And he is an Elvis man, <laughs> mm-hmm. which is like one of the fun things. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know. This is this is like well known like Pulp Fiction lore, but Bridget might find it interesting. And for any two, she doesn't will. know it. Like there's a cutout scene wrapped. where Mia is asking Vince if he's a Beatles man or a Vegas or yep. a Vegas man because uh, last name's Vega yeah. um, or an Elvis man. And so that's <clears> why <throat> when they are pulling up to Jackrabbit Slim, she says an Elvis man like yourself should love it or whatever. Yep. Also, I want to get married mm. to Jack Rabbit Slims. Me too. I would love that. You like, know, they almost opened one, like, and Harvey Weinstein ended up being a pedophile and an awful person, gross. or and whatever they said, the hell he's doing. Nope. Like, Which I mean, fair. Yeah. I, like every day, I tell Bridget that I would happily marry her in Vegas in front of Elvis and everyone else, and, and I she say like no. won't do it with me. Why? I want to have like the traditional, not tra- traditional. There's nothing traditional, traditional about your guys. Right, like, what about us is traditional? I fully intend on wearing pants. <laughs> like I'm, I want to wear a, a wedding jumpsuit. That's my like I goal. It. I want a like, wedding why dress. Why can we not get married in Vegas? I would love because that. Because I want our family and friends to be there. They can come to Vegas. They know where it's at. I love Vegas. <laughs> they know where Vegas is. I've Vegas. never been to Vegas. You could have the party oh. here and the wedding in Vegas. Yeah. Like I, I'm just saying, it's so my aesthetic to get married in Vegas. Is that not like the most me thing to do? That is to you. go get married in Vegas. Yeah, my Next mom. Next to like, I mean, what would be what's. I'll think of it. Get like I'm just it. saying like, that if you donate to our Patreon, <clears throat> I will make sure we have a gay Vegas wedding. My mom, uh, before I came out to my grandma, was encouraging me. When I, I, told I her would about genuinely it. love to do it. Like that would make me happy. But also, it's more important to you. So like I'm fine with. The I want to get a way. cute little venue. Yeah. Okay. Like, this is not the wedding planning <laughs> podcast. This is the Pulp Fiction <laughs> podcast. Yeah. The, the wedding planning podcast when we aren't even engaged yet. I want to ask to the group back to Pulp Fiction Mm -hmm. what's like your favorite plot line I mean obviously they all intersect but I'm interested in like who's your favorite absolutely Butch and Marcellus is the best plot line in the whole film you know it yeah Butch is my favorite don't get me wrong like the Vincent Vegas stuff and and Mia like that that's all cool and really aesthetically pleasing but there's some real shit in the Butch Marcellus storyline. The, butch, the butch is very interesting to me, and I want to talk about that in a minute. But I want to hear the other answers first. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Uh, I want to say the butch and Marcellus as well, but that's also it was a very upsetting yeah. scene for me to uh, watch. That's why, was, yes. that's why I had a surprise I, face. That's on. I was just like, what? upsetting to watch. It in was, general. I mean, like I really, we really do support. We 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 out here supporting your boy Butch for <laughs> fucking coming back. <laughs> Like Butch did I, not have to come back. That's that's kind of what well, we're about to get into it, aren't we? Yeah, I want to get let's into Butch it, in a second, but a I want right. to hear the answers but first. I, I would say the scene that didn't make me uncomfy was, I mean, they all kind of made me uncomfy, but... Oh, it was such a good thing I have to say that I really, if I forget it, I'll kill myself. Okay. okay Watching go. Tarantino direct a sex scene is the worst thing you'll ever have to do. Correct. Yes. Watching Butch and Fabian, Fabiani, right? Is Fabian, that it? yeah. Uh, I don't correct. know. Yeah, I no, knowing a- that he's sitting behind the camera, like, yeah. Well, is, true. Dude, it 
fucking was awful. I was like, oh my god! Like it's not that it was directed badly or that they weren't believable. It's the fact that you know that he's, he's sitting behind. There doing the, it. He's behind the camera, and he's like. He's like, yeah, yeah, yes. man, that's good. Like, can we get some more feed in there? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like the fact that Quentin Tarantino has a child is insane to me because he's like the least sexy what? person to ever walk the earth. I'm sorry, he has a child. Yeah, but he's Tarantino. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. I mean, like, if you if you could get it, you should get it. Like, there's a, there's a film student out there who's like, if I just have sex with him, maybe some of his talent <laughs> well, will leave with me. Right? Yeah, he has a kid. Right. I mean, I'm pretty sure he like lives in Israel. I could be wrong about that. But the I'm, kid or Tarantino? Both of them, presumably together. I don't think Tarantino lives in Israel. I think he does. So I don't have my phone with me. Somebody so gotta Google it. I, um, I more don't like separate the movie into like which plot I like better. I just like the scenes with the fixer guy the most. Those are my yes, favorite. Yes, my boy Harvey. Yes, I love yes, him. Yes. I love him. Yeah, more that than was life. a fun scene. Mm-hmm. I also really liked. Um, I mean, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. The scene with Uma Thurman when she like does what she thinks is coke. Oh yeah. And it's definitely snorts not coke. Some heroin. And she snorts a line of heroin, and then like where he's like taking her to the dealer's house to get her yeah. f- like fixed essentially like That's i enjoyed a that a lot he lives in hollywood and tel aviv he lives in both places so is real yeah i know what tel aviv is i was just shocked to hear that yeah he has a son named leo is what you didn't mention that his wife was israeli that would have really helped me believe you um, <laughs> you, you know that really would have helped sorry the, you, you, you know think? just saying What's Do you that? think he named the son Leo after Leo? Le- Leo Leonardo DiCaprio? DiCaprio? Probably not. Probably not. I like to think Leo's he does. like not even like top rank actor for Tarantino. He likes him and stuff, but yeah, I mean, I like, like he's no Christoph Waltz or you know. I like to Sam think Jackson. Sam Jackson. Is. Quentin Tarantino names his kid Uma Thurman's feet. He, you know, the Tim Roth character in Hateful Eight easily could have been Christoph Waltz. Just wanted to throw that out there. I know, and I think it should have been, but it wasn't, so no, it it's wasn't. fine. Anyway, um, the other day, just real quick, the other <laughs> night I had a dream that uh, my dad was on a business uh, trip and I went past this like outlet mall and in there, there was a sign, there was like a store that was called Tim Roth and I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> like Tim Roth, if you're out there listening, this is your impact, dude. There's right. A, yes. Like right. Is, it's right between the limited two and the shack store. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, what the fuck is that? And my mom's like, yeah, it's for uh, Tim Roth's, like, brand of clothes. And I was oh, like, what the it's fuck? It's like, just is, for Tim like, Roth. what is Tim Roth's brand <laughs> of clothes? Because to me, it's, like, wife beaters and Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> Which <laughs> also like is my type brand. Of store. I know. I say. I was really trying to, like, I really went through a phase, and this is not a joke, where I was just, like, trying to, like, emulate a Quentin Tarantino film version of Tim Roth. Like, at I all times. I love that. And I mean, like, still a little bit, but not so much anymore. But like, it's a good aesthetic. I mean, it is a good aesthetic. The boogie woogie really aesthetic. Yeah, but I want to talk about Butch for a minute because this is this is important Ooh. to me. Like, this is this is like to me the anchor of this movie. Like, is Butch being there? And the more that I watch this movie, like each time I watch this movie, I find myself always thinking about butch like after i watch it because mm-hmm. i think that's like i don't know to me like he's somehow the most important character in this movie definitely the most interesting yeah and i agree i think that the story about the watch is something that really is interesting oh um, yeah it's How like fun. that's yeah. like timeline that's like a meme before meme you know what i mean yeah. like the movie itself treats it like a meme like yes. your watch your father's watch and it's a great like active like concept to make everything in the movie for him happen is the watch. Yeah, right. Really yeah. cool idea. And and the movie plays with time, which is really and cool it's too. Yeah, and it's That's interesting true. That's because a it's a war watch very much specifically. It is a war watch. And so you know, in, in the way that um, Christopher Walken's character describes this watch is that like, it is something that the men in this family would put on when they went to war and then take it off. And so what's really interesting is when we sort of meet Butch, he's not wearing his watch. And he's like this very tortured almost. And like, it's like, what is his issue? He's waking up like in the night from these like night terrors. But like, why do you have them? And 
to me, this watch is so important to Butch at that specific moment because he's he doesn't have a war to fight. He's like the first person in his generation that didn't have a, or not in his generation, in his family that didn't have a war to fight. Like, you know what I mean? Because his dad was in Vietnam, but now it's the 90s. And like, yes, we were, you know, engaged in conflicts in the 90s, but like he doesn't have he doesn't have this war. And I think it tortures him that he doesn't have this war to fight. And that's why it becomes so important that he gets this watch at this moment when he's betrayed Marcellus, because that is his war that he has to fight. Yeah, for sure. And like, and so like him going back to get that watch and being able to put it on, like he has to go through something in order to get that watch. And then also he has this like interesting thing with Marcellus himself um, you know, they talk like Christoph, Wal- uh, Christoph Waltz, Christopher Walken's character <laughs> talks about, um, I had to shove this watch up my ass. Up his ass. Um, like, you know, it's one of the bingo. previous generations, like a person who didn't know him helped him to get that watch to his family. And in such a sense, like Marcellus, who is the enemy allowed him to return to his woman, allowed him to keep his watch, allowed him to like win his war. And so it's really interesting how you see Butch being like this like tortured kind of person who has all of this like angst and all this anger inside of him. And like it's and it's it's really interesting and it like kind of speaks to this generation in the nineties that just that they didn't have a war to fight and he didn't have a war to fight. And that's my that's my Butch thesis about I like, really Butch. Enjoyed listening to that thing. Thank, you. Thank you. <laughs> no, uh, I but yeah, but yeah, agree. like he and so and so he has to he becomes a man and he becomes worthy of that watch when he saves Marcellus. And and I want to talk about, even though it's like the most uncomfortable part of the movie, I want to talk about the insanely well-directed fucking gut wrenching scene. Yes. Um, the, first of all, the music makes you just feel absolute dread. Correct. Um, Mm -hmm. and then it's, it's kind of a a weird moment because you're, I feel like if it wasn't for the music, Butch going upstairs and looking through multiple weapons would seem comical and also like kind of like cold because like Marcellus, it's happening to him right now. Yeah. The idea that we're looking through these weapons seems kind of like shitty, but the way the music has it, you're hanging on to Butch like it's in the moment. Yeah. Like for us, 10 seconds seems really long or like, like 30 seconds seems really long in a movie if you're not hanging on. But in real life, 30 seconds is like flying fucking by. And I feel like we were we were so stressed out in this scene that we were as yeah. stressed as him. And it felt like nothing. But he looks for a weapon for like 30 seconds. Like, yeah, looks, he really picks does. up another one. Picks up, but we don't think about it because we're like, holy shit, what the fuck's going to happen? Like, what are we doing? Like, yeah. I was like, is he going to leave him down there? Mm-hmm. She's going to split? You we're, know? Just, we're just hanging on that moment with him. We're not even thinking about how weird it is that he's taking the time to like pick one out. Right. That's what's right. so cool aesthetically about the movie is it's, it almost like puts you in a state of mind that it's it, it's fiction. It, it puts you in the state of mind of like being really forgiving of odd moments that would never happen. Yeah. Because right. the movie's yeah. tone is so perfect with that. Um, and like if, if this is Butch's war that he has to fight, mm-hmm. he wants to fight it correctly. And like that's something that's important to him. And I think that that like really is something you know whether it's conscious or not that he like you know this is his moment and and this is the perfect movie to point out to people when they're like music isn't that big of a deal in a movie like there's people who feel that way if it wasn't as stressful as it was especially that scene i really feel like we'd look back on that and be like that's just gratuitous disgusting bullshit right but everything that happens in this movie i mean in order for butch to want to go save marcellus he has to be facing something worse than actual death because right. no more than 10 minutes before what happened, he was ready to fucking kill Marcellus himself. So for people who put like aggressive sex scenes in movies, you know, rape scenes, stuff like that, most of the Which time... Which like goes for you yourself, Quentin. Yeah. This doesn't apply yeah, to Yeah, actually, here, good point. We were talking about it earlier, so I wanted to bring it up. Like, this goes for you too, Q. Yeah, there's moments in films where I feel like you had it and you didn't need to. This movie. I like that we talk to him like he's here with us. What the if, little Quentin on my shoulder. What if he like is listening though? <laughs> that would be great. That would be great. He just like 
makes a movie about if, if, watching if our Quentin reviews. Tarantino was listening to this podcast and I somehow like got word of it, I think that I would like actually have to die. <laughs> <laughs> like I like, like you know what I mean. Like I would just like have to die. I like what Madison told us in the car today was that if she was a Make a Wish kid, her <laughs> wish would be to punch Quentin in the face one good time, <laughs> one just real good one. It's a really weird relationship you have with Tarantino. I know. I really do. Like I love him and I hate him. And the reason I would have to die was because like I couldn't handle living in a world where like. Tarantino was aware of your existence. Yeah, like that would just be insane. Yeah. Like how I think like. So you're never gonna go to like a horror con or anything, or like to go see him. I would love to. Like that would. Mm-hmm. Mm, I like. I don't even know how to. <laughs> like it's because I have such conflicting feelings about him. I don't know. It's really weird. Like sometimes I feel about Quentin Tarantino the way that Logan feels about Kevin Smith, but then other times I'm like, I hate you. Don't look at me. Don't. What helps is like my 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 hero is just a good guy. Like he's yeah, not problematic. I mean, not, yeah, and he's Quentin just a is, good dude. And Quentin is problematic. He's so problematic at times. <laughs> he said, mm. "Did, did anybody get the official feet. feet count for the movie?" Fuck, I, I tried to too. keep track and then I lost count because in that dance scene, you see them, you see her feet so many times that I'm like, "How do you?" I think count we that? count that as like a just like two. Okay. She's got two of them dancing around. <laughs> uh, two of them. And then you see them when he first comes into the house. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I want to say. And then, you know, like, that's not even the only feet because we see Fabian's feet as well. I think right. we see um, Bonnie's feet very briefly. Do we? I think we do. I'm not I sure. I could be wrong. How? Somebody can. I think we see her, like, taking off her shoes or something. Really? I think she does take off her shoes. Why the fuck would she do that? Damn it, Quinn. You're just fucking any chance you get. Yeah, like, I mean, you only see Bonnie so briefly, but, like, she's walking in the house, and I think you see her, like, take off her shoes. Also, when uh, when Vincent took off his shoes, I prayed, and I, my prayers were answered. He did not take off his socks, too. I know. Like, imagine, Just a slappy imagine fucking, having to see John Travolta's Those wet, feet. slappy feet. Oh. <laughs> looking like that penguin and happy feet and shit. He didn't want to see John Travolta's body. I know. Like, like mm, it's really upsetting, because, like, especially because, like, you see Sam Jackson, and he's, like, he's, he's cut. He's great. He's great. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he looks really good. And then John Travolta's, Even like, his Wheaties, like Again, I'll say his soft, shitty body. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's terrible. Oh, can we talk about um, Crime. Butch and uh, what's her name? Fabian. Fabian, thank you. Like, just how gentle he was with her. But then like, also not. Oh, but yeah. also not. The okay, no, no, no. scene, that is so you and I am, Madison. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but they're referring to the fight with the watch, I think, right? Yeah, I was referring to the fight where he was like... You know, it's okay. And he gets in the car. He's like, God damn it. That is the most human moment. It really is. Because there's, you cannot fucking tell me you've never blown up on somebody who's disappointed you that bad. Yeah. Like, and and you know what? Even more so real, because he, he let the apology happen. Like, he was like, I'm sorry. I I, I image grabbed too much stuff. But the car is the real rage. That's so real. Right. Like, I cannot tell you how many times I've been like, yeah, it's okay. I'm not upset about it. Just to like anyone in my life, (laughs) like, not even Bridget's looking at me like, oh my god! And Bridget's now I'm anxiety upset. is through the roof. Well, not just Bridget, <laughs> just like sure. anyone, like getting in an argument with someone and then like being like, I'm sorry, I blew up, I shouldn't have done that, and then like just getting in the car and being like, God damn it, you fucking bitch! I fucking told you ten times. Is you, that how you, you felt? and I have done that together? About when we worked at the same place, like let's I just know. get in the car and scream like, fuck you! Like, fuck you! What the fuck is wrong with you? Babe. Yeah, like what? Is oh. that how you were after you left after the fight about the sheet on the bed? <laughs> oh my about? god hey, hey here's a rule this is a relationship rule and this is real me and franny have this rule you're not allowed to ask questions you don't want the answer to <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just curious you don't, don't get to be way. curious I about it i really had a fight about the sheet on the bed like I just remember I that was like the first like, week I you both you both separately yeah. told me about it though that's a fight <laughs> like, i don't know what to say the other night i think i blew up too much because I got to say with Bridget about the sheet. And then you came up and was like, I mean, I'm mad at me. You can live the, the, the sheet. And I'm like, oh my God, you two <laughs> well, are I ridiculous. Remember, I don't remember it being that big of a deal. Like, but you, I told, big you told me. The first, and like, fight told living me. together. But what did I say? Like, that I, that I, you're, like, like, I don't, you're like, I don't know, man. I feel like I made a mistake. <laughs> I was I was yelling at Bridget about something and it wasn't even a big deal, but I, like, I totally got mad about it. And it wasn't worth getting mad about it. I'm like, what was it? Like, I, there was a sheet on the bed and I didn't want it on the bed. <laughs> 
really was that though that's so living together also though. like for me you know i meant it because for me to be like i made a mistake yeah i was wrong yeah that doesn't happen it doesn't it doesn't happen it does not well happen. okay um but yeah <laughs> i just wanted to know if that's what happened to I, don't think no, I don't remember it being i don't i barely remember that happening. from this moment forward you two are not allowed to ask each other questions like that <laughs> especially not on air i was just fucking around because like no, could I don't, you like, imagine as like you know what you're right i was bah, bah, and then you just start fighting right here that's good content yeah that's good content. I, I honestly do not remember that fight that's how inconsequential it was i'm sorry <laughs> if i was mean to you about the fucking cheat i, I genuinely mean you came am. back you like came back and you're like i'm sorry about the the fight you know you can keep the sheet on the bed if you want it and i was like okay i'm just gonna keep it like behind my pillow if i need it and you're like okay it was literally <laughs> our the sheet is still on the bed it wow, is wow you're so powerful i know like well, i mean we, we we figured it out we worked it out kids I'm it's under my you. pillow Thanks. so and, and pulp, she covers up with it if she needs pulp it fiction anyway <laughs> <laughs> anyway um, but anyway i just really think that it's a very strong like indication of butch's like moral like standing he's not gonna like actually blow up on her and like yeah and when say, he did he's he, like holding back yeah he really cares about her you can he tell really does yeah, but and he also just has like, a lot of anger in him and, and I, mean, I think that also stems back to like right he doesn't have an outlet for it but like no. he doesn't take it out on her and i have to respect a man I mean, he doesn't just now, a little now let's like talk a little jib jib but here's the, let's talk about his callousness though and here's the thing you even more so have to justify the sexual violence scene because butch finds out he kills a man and he's cold about it now he right, probably, yeah. probably you can tell it affected him but visibly right. he's cold. He's like, if he, if he was a better fighter, he would be dead. But, but you know, like that's right. not really how he feels. Like he does feel bad about it. He but how the fuck it. would he ever save Marcellus otherwise? Because he, he chooses to be that cold. I mean, he tried to fucking hit him with a car. In fact, he did hit him with a car. He did. Yeah. But like, and at this point too, he's already killed Vincent. Also, I love Marcellus's drip, dude. That shirt. I, I wish I could. I know. If I could pull off mm-hmm. that kind of shirt, you know, I'd wear that Marcellus kind of shirt. Looks right? so good. Like, dude, he's, he's got good drip. dude. He, look, he always looks good. With that big ass bandit on, you know, the- I know <laughs> <laughs> what he's doing. The one really jarring thing to me about this movie is I can't picture Mia Wallace and Marcellus Wallace together. We were talking you know? about this. Yeah, it just it's, it's it's weird, right? But I feel like for her, it's about a lifestyle. For him, it's about an image. And if that's their if that's the relationship and they're cool with that, I mean, we were talking more power about to like, them. does she love him? And I think that the answer I said was like, we have no way of knowing that. Right, we we don't see I them think, interact. I think we actually do have a way of knowing that she doesn't. Mm. Yeah, because I mean, it's very clear. Bec- it's not very clear, but I think um, there is a very clear infatuation with Vincent. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, that's what I was going to say. And the thing is, is like, she's so like cold to that. Like, she knows what happened to, to old boy who got thrown out the window. And she can say that that's not the reason why. But and we don't we know for sure. think that that's the reason? Yeah. We, it could be. It definitely I could mean, be. Who's to say, really, though? I but, think, and, like, especially when Butch, or, like, when they're, like, in that bar scene where um, he's talking to the bartender and they're talking about how, like, uh, Vince is going to take um, Mia out. And, like, they're like, have you met Mrs. Wallace? Like, yeah, that's what yeah, I, you that really beat kinda, me to it. Yeah. That gives me vibes that because the, how, how like pumped. Have you met Mrs. Wallace? I feel like she might be catching some strange dick cause she wants to, or like, yeah. she you don't love somebody flirting doing with all of them. I and mean, like, yeah. you know, kind of toy. She might on some level love him, but it might not be like the kind of love that I think she loves like, monogamous I, relationships. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that it is like a lifestyle thing. And mm-hmm. I think that she's too like, kind of drug addled and like she's far too as the nice word would be eccentric to have a standard yeah. relationship yeah well and i mean That's like fair. when you see like mia you see like obviously she's someone who's quite dissatisfied with the way that things have gone for her like her pilot failed and she very much treats herself like in like a like an intellectual yeah like every she hangs on to every word like she's like the smartest person ever talk but Vincent's yeah, right. the same way, and that's why they were getting along. Because Vincent's like talking about the fucking metric system and this and the Royale, like it's the most fucking smart thing ever. Yeah. With, when she's I talking, know, baby, you dig it the most. You dig it the most. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> when they're at dinner and he's like, "I don't want to say it. You got to promise you won't get mad." And she like gets so into it, like it's a question about her, and she's clearly like obsessive about it. And like, yes, 
please talk about me. I can't promise I won't get mad because that's the sassy thing to say. Right. Like it's clearly like she's living for the drama of it. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's the thing about her. She likes the attention. I think she likes the aesthetics of and she, Vince. She's kind of an entitled little shit in a way. Like she finds heroin in his coat. And she's like, "This belongs to me." Like that's not fucking yours, bitch. I mean, it's true. Yeah, you're yeah. right. I mean, I mean, I mean, I get that. It's to it. Yeah, it's kind of part of her tell charm. Her no, like, but that's what I'm saying. That's why the relationship says, works. Yeah. He, she's a status symbol. I mean, she's literally a former actress, model-looking girl. Yeah. I mean, she and Marcellus has has money and power and protection to offer her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think with that comes a degree of control that he yeah, has over her as absolutely. well. Because she says, like, if Marcellus ever found out, if I out about this, like. I'd be I'll be in more trouble than trouble, you. Yeah. 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 Um, that joke is amazing. I don't care what anybody says. I love it. And it works even better with the way Franny says ketchup. Stop. Say it. Ketchup. See. Ketchup. Ketchup. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. What? No. No, I think it's adorable. Thanks. <laughs> she said. She said no, and then I no, said it was adorable, and she was like, "Oh, me. thanks." But yeah, I do agree that like Vince and Mia have this like kind of. They're both like full of shit. Yeah, and they're both Absolutely. like, and they both are like very aesthetically, like driven, but also mm-hmm. are are kind of slave to their vices in such a way. And not only are, but they also feel the need to be, like, almost anti authority in a way. Like, like me is like I, I'm gonna do whatever I want, blah, 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 essentially. Right. Like. And then he's the same way. Literally, when he like the fixer comes in, he's like, "You gonna say please?" Like, dude, shut the fuck up. Oh They're my god, both, I hated like, that. Spoiled brats. Like the fact that he yeah. like, like the fact that Winston doesn't just turn around and walk out <laughs> is like such a testament. I would because I, I, I would, would turn around and walk. Like, out. I would let a bitch say some shit like that to me. I'm leaving. You can solve your own problems. But yeah, I mean, yeah, they both have this like sort of yeah anti authority kind of thing mm-hmm. about them. They're both like very like just kind of like they really match up i feel like yeah. in a different you know like tangent universe or whatever maybe they would be the total type to like link up mm-hmm. and i would really it, i really wish we would have had some sort of scene where she has a realization of his death just to see how she'd react because i don't know mm-hmm. if she'd be cold and like not care or like fucking freak out and that's kind of the know. fun part of the movie where you think about all, all these relationships intertwine but you don't really get to see a lot of resolution to some of that. Yeah, that's true. And that makes it so much more interesting. Like, yeah, I how agree. is Marcellus after the event? Like, how, how, Lily, how is he? Like, how does he yeah. act? What does he do? Doesn't he? Does he change? I, I always thought that Reservoir Dogs takes place following the events of Pulp Fiction. Kind of, that that's like the the going theory. Yeah. Well, because Harvey Keitel's character, Mister White, asks joe he says like you know who do you have that can move your ice the only person i knew that could move ice was marcellus wallace or something like that Mm -hmm. and joe asks like what happened to him and he's like he's doing time and oh really that was like and then he says Mm -hmm. why and uh, mr mr white says bad luck and so i presumed that he ended up in prison due to the events of pulp fiction that's interesting but but here's my issue with that yeah um I, I feel like, especially with like the, the range of the movie and everything going on, the time frames of what happened in the film don't reflect that. This mm. still is taking place in 95, whereas Reservoir Dogs still took place in 92. So I think that Marcellus got out of prison and oh, then got okay. some drip. Because remember, they were like, it, it's kind of like a, a, an essence that's grown. Like now mm. Marcellus Wallace is the fucking boy. That's I feel fair. like that happened post prison. Mm. That, that makes sense. That makes sense too. Mm-hmm. That does. Which, you know, could explain the whole, like, or maybe, you know, the Band-Aid thing. Maybe he was in prison, spinal yeah. tap. Yeah, no, that's the soul. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I, that's, 100%. I mean, that's a fun way to look that. at it, for sure. But yeah. I, but considering Res Dogs is 92, and then, you yeah. know, it's, it's actually within line of what it was. Um, yeah. I don't know. Like, just... Just kind of like thinking about the movie as a whole, just like the way that it's shot and the way that it's edited and like cut together, and like just that sort of like that that kind of the way that Quentin Tarantino made this film, like on the technical level of like how he shot it, how he 
cut it and edited it. I mean, he didn't edit it, but like, you know what I mean? How well, it uh, kind of did. I mean, he wasn't the editor, but he was in the, he was on the cutting room floor. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, how the, fa- like how the film was edited, like the way that it was shot, the, the, the colors and the aesthetics and like the sort of this, like the best way I can describe it is like the snappiness of it. And like the, those kind of like quick punchy. cuts the yeah, punchy is a good word as mm-hmm. well. Like, I think that that really sort of, influenced heavily the way that people make movies now even like not not even on like a conscious level like this is what pulp fiction did but i I really do think that it like sort of changed the way that a movie can look and feel and like the way the tone that a movie can take on one of the things that was kind of wild that uh um i've I've thought about in the past is that this whole movie could be a still cam and just have characters talking like, it really kind of almost works on a play level. There's, yeah. it, You could do most of this movie other than, you know, the, the one scene in the pawn shop and the car crash. Everything else is very still. Like, y- he could have never moved the camera, and I wonder if it would have held the same level of, like, interest. I mean, I don't think so, because I think, like, those camera movements, the way that we, like, cut from there character really, to there character. There really wasn't that many, though. The, but, like, the way that they're placed like, especially, are very... Especially with Butch. Like, that whole scene, he's just on Butch. Yeah. So, I, I, I just wonder... If, if this film is more a product of great editing over directing or the other way around. Or I, a combination I think, I think of that they work together, honestly. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I say that because, like, I know Quinn's going to stop doing movies. I kind of want him to edit a movie that's not his and see how it looks. Like, that's I really, really interesting. Yeah. I think that's an interesting He didn't point. technically edit this, but he kind of did, you know? Like, he really sort of did. He definitely had a hand in it. Yeah, I'm, no, I mean, like, he would... Apparently, he was doing more editing than the actual editor at one point. That was an mm. issue. I would be pissed if I was the fucking editor. I'd be so mad. I'd be Don't like, get on a Tarantino movie. I'd be like, back the fuck <laughs> but up. But she, she this is really my has work. edited like, all of his movies yeah, until they, she they passed w- away. They, they, yeah, they worked together. They were very bit. close collaborators. I think that was a part of it. You know, She was willing to kind of like pass the keyboard yeah, sometimes. Yeah, and let him kind of... Mm-hmm. Um, and they had a really good similar sensibility, too. Yeah. With like, so, like, shout out to Sally Menke, like, mm-hmm. our unsu- unsung hero. Well, she's not completely unsung. Oh, yeah. well, no, but, like, of the, like, you know, like, just, like, a shout out to, to her, like, like may she rest in peace, you know? Yeah, she was one of the names on the Deborah Hill production t-shirts. You know what that is? Mm-mm. So, Deborah Hill produced Halloween, and she's, like, an infamous, like, woman in cinema. And they came out with these shirts that they sold, and this is a Deborah Hill production on the front of it. And then it's a bunch of female filmmakers or workers oh, on the back. Cool. And the whole thing oh. went to like a charity. So that's, that's cool. really cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, and I think I think like I don't know. I feel like I'm almost like I don't know. Are we at closing thoughts at this moment? Um, so I don't Quinn's know. acting sucked balls in this movie. By oh the way. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and like, my God. like that scene, that scene that he's in, like it's controversial, and I don't really want to like hash oh, that argument no, yeah. out right now yeah. again I, I don't know how controversial again it is, but that's okay. I, uh, it's how the characters are it's how they talk it's who I'm they like, are I'm, mm, I you don't, don't have to agree. like the character i just said that i didn't want to have the art hash the argument out now here we yeah, are but you can't say it's controversial and then I let mean, it, it go controversial. either it's controversial to who dude like okay i was literally looking at the quentin tarantino wikipedia page uh-huh. and he has a section labeled controversies and that scene and like that that is included in his controversy I, I so just, I think it's safe I mean, to say that it's doesn't fucking controversial. Surprise me at all. I mean, writing yourself to be able to say like when you know that you're going to be playing a certain part, like writing yourself to say the n word multiple times it's the is kind of character. Yeah, that's what I'm saying too. I mean, no matter who was I, behind it and saying the words, it's the character. I, but I think it's one of those but things that's gratuitous. He, he writes something like he has Marcella say the n word. He wrote it's it's Quinn Tarantino saying it. Every single word of I this mean, film is not. Tarantino, but it is because he wrote it. But he's not Where's the one the saying it. I mean, so, I think that so the issue is oh God, if he would have cast again. somebody else, it'd be fine. I mean, that depends on who he casted. Okay, let's say so. Let's go with. Um, let's let me think of a. Why what, does let's say Michael Madsen, right? It's Michael Madsen. I mean, that would still feel uncomfortable. But the fucking point of the movie is that that's who the character is. He's supposed to be hated. You're supposed to not like him. He's, He's supposed, supposed to be, to be a shitty person. But at the same time, like, I think that there is something. I think that, like, it merits questioning. I don't think it does. I, I think I mean, it merits questioning. Let me, but let I, me finish. Like, I think it merits. What you paused. I didn't know you finished. So calm down. It merits questioning. <laughs> and, like, like that he. 
and it's not just in this film either. He he chooses to give himself this role. That is the character that he chooses to play. And if acting is something of a, I think acting is something of a fantasy for him. Why is this the character that he chooses to give himself? And I'm not like, and I'm not saying because people, I'm not the authority on whether or not this is okay or whether it's racist or whether it's offensive, but I find it uncomfortable. And I, I find it something that kind of like, I don't know. It's like, why, why did you feel the need to do that? And like, I know for me personally, I would never feel comfortable doing something like that. Like that just is not something I would want to do. I mean, it's it was well, also well, 1995. Speak. I got interrupted. Let me see. It's, it's world building. Remember, none of these characters in this world are supposed to be put up against real people. I know. I mean, I they're mean, all like, fucking murdering criminals. And on top of that, he's supposed to be a character who is essentially pissing off the audience. Like, he's being rude to Sam Jackson's character who we're aligning with by being so fucking openly racist. Yeah, and I mean, I think that, and I think that that's like, like I said, I'm not, I'm not going to say, yes, this, this scene, this character is racist, but I'm not going to say it's not either because I ultimately don't think that's for me to decide. And I think that it's like a subject of debate and various people. Well, actors when you say things like it makes him. you feel uncomfortable, you are saying that. You're just not saying it. I mean, that's not what I'm saying. Like, because it's, again, it's not like this is like a situation where when we look at fiction it, it like like it, we can't I, I think it's hard to like look at something fictional it, like this where it's like yes this is a character but also it's a person saying these words and so like for me it makes me uncomfortable and like and if that's the point then that's the point but it makes me uncomfortable and it is like you know if I'm if I'm writing a movie that I know that I'm going to be in, this is something I would never write for myself to do. But that's just me. Like, that is just not what, that is just not what I would do. I wouldn't feel comfortable doing it. But it's not for me to say. Like, I don't know. Like, Spike Lee has lots of thoughts on the subject. You can listen to what he has to say. He's the, he's the authority, not me. Or alternatively, like, Sam Jackson has a lot of thoughts on the subject. You can listen mm -hmm. to him. He's the authority, not me. Like, I don't, like, what do I mm -hmm. know about it? And I think that goes for all of us. Like, you know. Yeah, but when you say something like it makes you feel uncomfortable, you you are outing your opinion on it though. Like when you're I saying mean, it I wouldn't do it, it makes me feel uncomfortable. That is like the cleanest way of saying it's wrong. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that it makes me personally uncomfortable, but it is ultimately not about my comfort. Mm -hmm. Like it it doesn't If it makes me uncomfortable, it makes me uncomfortable, but like my white person discomfort is not the arbiter of what makes something racist. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so like, that's the point I'm trying to make is not that like, I think it's wrong or I think it's right. I'm just saying that like me personally, I, it makes me feel weird. And you know, I think that people have written on this subject and like, like ways that I find interesting. And like, those are arguments that I hear on both sides of the arguments about this scene. But like, I don't know, me saying it makes me uncomfortable isn't me saying that it's wrong because like, yeah, because like it's not about my like white discomfort. It's about how, you know, the actual people that this affects feel and the jury's out on it and that's fine because like it's not. I just worry about censorship personally. And when, when we say things like it's controversial and it makes me feel bad and we just move on without explaining our end of it, I feel like we're basically saying it's bad without saying it's bad. So that's why I felt the need to speak up when you spoke up. It has nothing to do with me saying that you're right and I'm wrong. Yeah, no. And I mean, like, yeah, and I mean, it is controversial. Mm -hmm. And, like, I'm, and I'm content to leave it at it's controversial. Yeah, I don't have too. an answer. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, I don't know. It's just one of those things that, like, I, I always welcome, because I have such a weird, like, relationship with Tarantino and that, like, I love him and I hate him. Mm -hmm. I, like, I always welcome perspectives on this and other like issues with him because I find them really interesting and like it will never hurt my feelings for somebody to be like yeah Quentin Tarantino's fucked up and, like I, I would probably agree with you in that mm -hmm. matter so I don't know and like this actually kind of segues me unless somebody else said something mm -mm. that they wanted to add <laughs> no I'm good no again I just I do worry about censorship I feel 
when building a character, there are certain elements that might not make everybody comfortable. Yeah, and I mean, I don't, I, like, I, don't, I also don't yeah. think that we're at risk of, like, Quentin Tarantino not being able to make a film no. saying the words no, he wants to say. Like, like you know saying. what I mean? Like, well, I don't well think- actually, let me, let, me, let me stop you there, though. If people find him, have him, his character saying an issue, I feel like people can have the same issue with writing it. I mean, when Django came out, there was a lot of people who thought, even, oh yeah for sure and like yeah and i just don't agree i feel like if you're in the antebellum south you're gonna hear things like that and that's what part of the world building was and the same thing goes with the shitty dude in hollywood in the in 95 who's involved with gang shit but doesn't want to be he clearly also is a believable character in the situation i think the real point of contention is who was cast I think you're absolutely right that it makes it look like he's just trying to make a free pass for him to say the N-word all over yeah. a movie. Yeah, and I, like, and again, like, I think that, like, I, I still, yeah, I, I think I find it the most uncomfortable because it's him, and, like, you intentionally wrote this character for yourself to play. Mm-hmm. And, like, yeah, I mean, maybe if you, and I, it still wouldn't, like, be super, like, nice to hear. But, but, it, but when, it's, when it's a separation of, these are these characters. They're horrible. Yeah, it's like an, Ameri- mean, like an American History X, right? These characters in American History X, have you ever seen the movie? Yeah, I've seen the movie. They say disgusting, horrible right. fucking things. Yeah. But you have to put it in the prism of this is this character in this universe. Yeah, and like, and that's why like, I don't feel... or like, I don't know what I was going to say, but like, like Django is one of those movies that like a lot of people were like, well, should you be making this movie really tight about it? And I, and I mean, I think that there's, that there's an argument to be heard there. And I think that like, if you, if you feel that this is not Quentin Tarantino's story to tell, then like you're valid in those feelings. And like, I'm not telling you that you're wrong for that, Yeah. but nor am I telling you that you're wrong for liking Django. Cause I also like Django yeah, and I think my, it's good. My big thing is, is the condemning, right? Like, if, if a group of people just condemn Django and just say it shouldn't be played anywhere and no one should see it, for me, I feel like the, the, the idea of the movie, as well as this movie, that is too nuanced. Y- you can't decide for everybody how they feel yeah, about it. Yeah, and I it. mean, I ultimately, I don't think that, like... I don't think that the people who are saying, like, Django is not a good film, we should not show Django, we should not... Like, I don't think that those people are either, A, the ma- majority, or, B, like, no. having a, having any sort of sway. You know what I mean? When it came out, maybe, but, I mean, it, here's, the, but, thing, it, here's yeah. the thing about controversial movies before they come out. Once you actually see them, especially in the case of Tarantino, you're going to see merit with the film that you didn't see yeah, when all I you mean, knew was the stories. Yeah, and, I mean, ultimately, like... The censorship angle of it doesn't concern me because I I don't think that like God or anyone could stop Quentin Tarantino from writing the movie he wants to write. No, you see, you might be wrong there because I mean I could be. Well, but what I'm what happened necessarily my, for Quentin? I'm saying censorship in general. Yeah, my 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 worry is that somebody's gonna see something like okay, like with like with Fantasia or like the old Looney Tune cartoons, people edited those to be different. Yeah, I don't necessarily agree with that i think there should be a public service announcement at the beginning of these things telling people this is wrong this is this this is that it's a product of this time yeah like but film is history yeah so when people talk about you know canceling tarantino that's one thing i don't really care about tarantino the man Mm -hmm. i really care more about tarantino's films and the way people have talked and certain movies have been changed like on Disney Plus, there's like some some kind of racist stuff taken out. It's not that I don't agree with it being taken out. I don't think it should have been there in the first place. But you can't fuck around with the past like that. I mean, the yeah, film has think, to stand as its own piece. Yeah, I think like like in the Disney example, like the fact that they still have those originals is like a good thing to me. But it's also like, you know, changing it like changing it it doesn't take away the fact that it existed and it's almost mm-hmm. better to say like and again like we can decide now that like we don't want to watch this because it's racist and that's yeah, fine that's fine because you decide it's there and you decided yourself yeah but i mean like and i mean the yeah the censorship angle is like one that i get um it's not something that hmm i don't know i'm trying to think about how to phrase it like I don't know. I don't know what I was going to say. I think maybe it, it'll come to me. I think both are real issues. I think, yeah, I think like it's a, yeah. I think if Tarantino right now produced another film and he just did the same thing, he's kind of missing the fucking point and that's his fault. Yes. But if we're talking about in the place, in the time in which he made it, 
I'm not saying that it, you shouldn't be upset about it. I think you should be upset about it if it makes you upset. No one should try to control each other's emotions or try to make decisions for you. But I am saying that if you want to view the film and, and call it like a racist film or this or that, make that decision for yourself. See it yourself and make that decision. Yeah. And, and here's think- the thing. It, I'm not saying you're wrong. You could be right. I'm just saying I'm not willing to censor it so that way people who find who find it racist before even seeing it can now watch it. And that's that's a real thing that's happening in Hollywood all the time. Yeah, and I mean, I ultimately, I think what censorship is not is people saying, like, this, this like, film or this scene in this film or this whatever is racist and it makes me That's uncomfortable. not censorship. That's not what censorship is. No. To me, censorship is, like, you know, this this film cannot be made because it has this element to it. You know The difference what I mean? between saying yeah. you can or can't say it or whether you should or shouldn't. That's the biggest thing with censorship. Yeah. And I mean, I mean like, again, like, you know, uh, me on the street can say like Quentin Tarantino can't say the N word. Yeah. But that doesn't have any weight. Like, you no. know what I mean? Like me saying that doesn't make it, doesn't necessarily make it fucking. So yeah, it's not to quote. Yeah. Chris Penn and reservoir dogs. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. And like that that kind of brings me this cut this discussion brings me to like if if it's okay if we're like good on it. Yeah. Um yeah. brings me to like my kind of my feelings about like Quentin Tarantino in general, but like specifically pulp fiction because it's one of those it's one of those films that like in some ways it's kind of like in some ways it's almost overrated because it's such like a film bro movie like (laughs) like i've said i've said it before and i'll say it again if you are if you are like talking to some guy and he and he's like oh i like cinema i like film and you're like oh what's your favorite movie and he says like pulp fiction you walk walk right away you turn you turn that shit around and you walk the other direction Mm -hmm. because that is like not the kind of energy you want in your life girlfriend it's it's really it's it's bigger than tarantino at this point yeah and so like and so like my feelings on quentin tarantino like pulp fiction is a representation of how i feel about quentin tarantino as this larger thing is like i find it kind of overrated and i find that like it it is canonized in a way that I don't know that it necessarily deserves. Oh, I think this movie but, definitely deserves to be like a part of film history. Well, I mean like canonized in like the sainthood, like in the holy sense, like when you're yeah. canonized as a saint, but no, like, I, th- I think it should this film. In particular. But like, and like, I mean this film in particular, and then like the works of Quentin Tarantino in general, like are, are very much upheld as this, like this pillar. And in some ways I think that, that, that these these films and him in general are overrated but the i mean not not his other not so much all of his other films but pulp fiction specifically is one of those ones that like people really have this like latch on to is like this is the peak of cinema and so in some ways i'm like pulp fiction's overrated quentin tarantino's overrated but then in other ways like you look at it and it's like this film that changed the way that films were being were made Mm -hmm. and like something that had such a profound like cultural impact on the way that we make movies on the way that we watch movies and on and like and in so much that like as we were talking about before like pulp fiction has made its way into like our other media yeah i mean it's it's like on a conscious level and on a subconscious level like this movie it did something and then on the other and then like even like less on, on a less analytical level than that it's a fucking good movie it's a great movie and like you watch it and you enjoy it so like yeah and so it's like it's really interesting and like this doesn't have there's no point to this i'm not coming to a conclusion well, I, I think but like but i just i have a complicated relationship with quentin tarantino and with pulp fiction in general i think the gist that i got off of you off of your rant because is how i feel is that the movie is literally just bigger than Tarantino now? Yeah, I think, it's, you're, I think it belongs. Right. It belongs to cinema. It belongs it's to ours fans now. You know, like it's it's like, you know, like as much as I love Kevin Smith and Clerks and all that stuff, he really is like the owner. He has ownership over those films. I feel like Pulp Fiction stopped being Tarantino's movie. Like it, it is, but it's so it, much more to people. Like it people can hate the, the rest of it, but you can't. You can't hate. I mean, you can hate Pulp Fiction for a lot of reasons. But you can't look at it like technically and hate it. Like it, it yeah. definitely is a technically good film, just on yes. the way that it was made and the and the merit that it carries with its style 
and its and its depiction of these characters and the cinematography and the music. It is a masterclass in that regard. And then sometimes when people think of it so highly, when you rewatch it, you're just gonna see all the freckles and moles, and you're gonna see all the worst parts of the movie because it's so hyped up. Yeah, I think what happens for people is that Pulp Fiction is hyped up, and then people watch it for the first time, and they're like, okay, yeah. Which is, you know, I mean, whatever. But like, yeah. So I don't know. It's just like the like now that we're kind of doing the twi- the ter- the Twarantino, the Twarantinis, <laughs> the Twarantino <laughs> thing. Like I'm realizing like both a how much tarantino's films impacted the way that i watch films and like the aesthetics of films that i like to watch but then also b like how complicated my relationship is with him like we were talking about we almost kind of did our kill bill podcast in the car earlier we kind of did actually but (laughs) But that's okay we'll do it again in like a a while i don't know but but i mean yeah and like like kill bill is definitely one of those that like makes me think about my like complex relationship to viewing tarantino and i don't know i mean that's just one of those things like and and then the other thing about kill bill i won't get into specifics but the difference for me with kill bill versus pulp fiction is the things that upset you in kill bill i feel like are not cinematically relevant that's 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 just how I i feel like it gave nothing it had nothing to do with world building it was just gross shit that's when I get annoyed because I'm like, this is simply just because you wanted to be a pornographer. Uh, yeah, and I mean, and not even like that about Kill Bill, but like, I mean that, but also like, you know, now we know the things that happened to Uma Thurman when she was filming Kill Which Bill. I, I do have to say though, speaking Uma Thurman speaking for herself, she has a great relationship with Quentin Tarantino. Uh, yeah, no, I know, I know, but like, it's mm-hmm. it's just one of those things where it's just sort of like. We'll get into as, that. Uh, yeah, we'll get into that. But I, I will say that, like, as I've gotten older from being, like, you know, 16 on Tumblr watching Reservoir Dogs every other week, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, like, like to now, older, wiser, having seen a lot more movies and, like, having developed some critical thinking skills that maybe I didn't have at the time. I mean, not to say that I wasn't thinking critically at the time, but, like, more so now. Mm-hmm. It, it's. I mean, it's just, like... I don't know. It's interesting on how on how much the way that I watch Tarantino has changed, and then how much the way that it has stayed the same. Because I'm not gonna lie, like I still watch Pulp Fiction and get those warm fuzzy feelings. Like, yes, this I is mean, like this we're is literally it. we're having a project where we watch all of it and we rank. Yeah, them. and we're doing that like for a reason. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, so yeah, I, don't, I feel like I talked a lot this episode. I did too. Don't worry about it. I uh, thought like I wasn't my, going like to. This, this almost never happens to me. My throat feels scratchy. Dude, I know. Dude, after the occult podcast, I don't know what it was. I think I just like laughed a whole lot from the Ouija board. My throat was just like, nah, dude. You're Spit done. In my eye. I'm so sorry. I was trying to not cough into the mic. In my eye, Madison. I'm That's so a sorry. love. Do you two have any wrap up thoughts? Because my big thought is Pulp Fiction, very good. I mean, I would agree with that. I mean, I'm going to give the rating. Obviously. Are we going to say who we are right? in this movie? Like we've oh, shit. Past? Oh, my God. We didn't do that. I'm Vince Vega. I'm Vince Vega. Are you? I think so. Yeah. I mean, like, who else would I be? I'm kind of a mess, <laughs> but I'm lovable, <laughs> and I have a soft, shitty body. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. That was just Aww. a joke. That was just a joke. I don't know. Um, I'm just not... I guess maybe Butch, too, because I do have a lot of fucking, like... Yeah, you know what? Probably Bush. I'm probably closer to... you got a storm bu- brewing inside. I, not like, only that, but I'm just, like, so... Like, I do I do have this generational difference from my family. I do have an unconventional life. <laughs> um, and I also, like... I, I'm always... I always feel like I'm never... I'm, I always feel like I'm good, but I'm never good enough. So, yeah. yes, Butch. Butch, t- 100%. I got to say, like, Butch's girlfriend... Wait, like, Fabian? You are Fabian. Bridget you kind of so are. Fabian. You literally are. Whoa. Like, yeah. I, know, I didn't even right? think it, that's like so accurate. Right? Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Like, okay. <laughs> think about, think about like the scene where he's trying to just get her to get on that fucking motorcycle. <laughs> like that is a me and Bridget conversation to a T. A thousand percent. Like, mm-hmm. like I'll be like, can we just go? Like, can we get, can we do this thing? And she'll be like, but are you mad at me? And I'll be like, but no, no, I'm not mad at you. Let's and just, just do it. Let's just a little bit go. of crying. And and then she's that's, like, uh, that's also me and Franny. That's though. also us. Yes. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Just get on the fucking bike. 
Like, <laughs> we gotta go. We gotta go. You're fine. We gotta go. I love you. We gotta go. I literally have that kind of stuff with Franny. Yeah, literally same. That's like that's the dynamic. I just have anxiety, you guys. I'm just I love you. Join I the club. <laughs> no, right. I think we're all anxious. Yeah. Who are you? I don't know. I don't know. Do you want my interpretation? Sure. I want your interpretation for me too, because I also can't pinpoint I myself. Know, like, I, I see myself I don't know. in a couple. I see, yeah. Okay. For you. For he's pointing at me. For Franny. 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 Yeah. I'd say it's somewhere a mix between Fabian and Uma Thurman's character, Mia. Yeah. For I you, you're Mia. Marcellus fucking Wallace. Dude. <laughs> Marcellus How Wallace. Noise. Marcellus. <laughs> you want me to explain? Yeah, it all? say more. Okay. Would you ever say that you have a rough exterior? You don't let people in very easily. No, I would never say that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I am an open book. We would were you, just would you say about that your unapproachable resting bitch face? Would you say that one of your best qualities is the wanting to protect those around them? Yeah. Okay. I feel like I do. I need to keep going. How you're Marcellus? I guess that's true. I guess I've got like. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I, yeah, I guess I would say probably that's true. You're definitely more Marcellus. I, I definitely have like a resting bitch face as me and Franny were talking about. <laughs> right? I do like, I wanted to say Mia Wallace, but I also didn't want to be every girl on Tumblr. But, but no, like, you are I though. I kind of you, am you are. Though. that Mia You're, Wallace In energy. every way that she's a mess, you have, no, just Yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> just kidding. It's true. Oh, wow. And that like, and also that like desire that I have to be in charge of things, mm -hmm. I think is also, and then just also like, I never forget a bitch. Yeah, I was about to say, and you're vengeful. I mean, she in a good way. I don't, think, a I don't think I'm like, I, would, I don't know if I would call myself vengeful, but I don't forget. What is that? What is you saying? I don't forget a bitch. What is that? Like, I never forget a bitch. Like, just, just know that if you, <laughs> just know that if you wrong me, I know. And I'll always know. And I'll know because I and never I'll forget a bitch. I'll always know last summer. I'll always know every summer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll always know what you did. I'll and always I'll know never forget. I was, I'd never forget a bitch on the summer. I never forget a bitch. Never forget a bitch any summer. Okay. All right, guys. Let's do the ratings. Yeah. I don't, I don't know, know how many feet there are, so we're going to have to... Do, on our last video of this, I'm just going to update all feet. I'm, like, at the yeah, last yeah, Tarantino yeah, movie, yeah, yeah. I'm be like, yeah. here's my research. Also, like, what's really exciting is... We were talking about this a little bit earlier, too. Next time, we get to do Jackie Brown. Ja love Jackie and Brown. And I'm so excited to do Jackie Brown with you all. To take the Jackie Brown journey with you. It's probably going to do pretty bad. I think that, like, numbers-wise, Jackie Brown's going to flop. If it's anything like Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> but I'm going to have a good time doing it. This might flop too. I don't know. Maybe you all don't care about Tarantino. Maybe what it boils down to is there's so many fucking reviews of these movies. Yeah. Maybe Jackie Brown is a weirder one that the people be like, I know. That's true. A Jackie and Brown review. Wow. Be like, oh, I forgot Jackie Brown existed. And like. You should be like, dang, I like to see Robert De Niro do Robert De Niro I things. I like to see a sexy Pam Greer. For sure. For sure, dude. I love to see a sexy Pam Greer. And then when she's got that record, anyway, we're gonna go. We're gonna go. We're, we're doing this again. I love her. Okay. All right, people, rate. All right, I'm gonna rate mine an eight out of ten feet. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Wouldn't it be weird if it was like an odd number? Like, where's that other guy's foot? <laughs> Where I thought about eight and a half out of ten, <laughs> out of ten feet. Eight and a half. That's great. Eight and a half, though. <laughs> I'd say it's like an eight out of ten for me. Ten I feet? Also, feet. Yeah. I also say eight out of ten feet. But wait. Oh. Oh, you're what? gonna you're gonna use the feet thing? I think you're gonna grade it. No, because we're doing numbers because we have to do an average. That's remember? right. Mm -hmm. nine I, did, out of I 10. did the numbers for reservoir dogs as well. It's a nine out of okay, ten. Okay, so now we need to add that up and get our average. Wait, I can't do that. Somebody else has to do it. I can do it. I, I don't have my phone, it's downstairs. I ate something I that's it. making me feel weird. <laughs> so eight plus eight plus eight plus nine. Divided by four. Divided by four. Twenty-six point. Wait, that's not correct. <laughs> that's not right. Hold on. <laughs> Times point. <laughs> Hold on. I don't know. If you take the integer and divide it by pi, <laughs> and then you add in two. Eight point two five. Already, it already had a reservoir. How did you do feet. that? You added them all together, and, and then, then you push equal, and then you divide them by four. Ah, you get the oh, average you have of something. To press equal. Okay. All right. Yeah. So the way it works right now is Reservoir Dogs at seven point three eight, and Pulp Fiction is eight point two five. Eight point twenty five. Yep. Out of ten. This uh, I I predict Pulp Fiction being like a contender for our group favorite. I I, I, I have. I think we are universal. I know what's not going to be. <laughs> Shut up. I hate you. I hate you. Aww. 
Ugh. He's not even talking about Reservoir Dogs. That's a sad thing. You might think that he's talking about Reservoir Dogs, mm. but he's not. I have a very strong. You know what though? My opinion was twisting though. I, I, I mean, rewatched good. it. Like, and I think I, it should twist. It improved. It wasn't good though. It wasn't I love like it. it wasn't like it was good. It was like it was better. I love it. Whatever. Um. Uh. Wait. Should we announce what next one is? I think we have okay, to. Okay. Uh, wait. Yeah. I'm confused. I don't know what we're doing next. So. Before this one, you all are listening to Big Lebowski. Okay, okay. And then, and then after, after this, this, you're listening one. to... So we've decided, because we're fun, and horror movies seem to be doing okay for us, we're going to do Paranormal Activity. We're going to do all those fucking movies. So the first... Not at once. So. No. So the first episode is going to be Paranormal Activity 1 through 3, because that's what we've watched. Yes. And then when we watch the other ones... We'll do that. 4 through technically 6, we'll do that... And then I think we should also rank the best PA movie, too. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I like that. I like that idea. And you so can yeah, get that's our hot that's takes on Mika. Oh, God. Don't even <laughs> get me God, started. We can't. We can't. This is not this podcast. Um, I know. It's, okay. Uh, I'm just this will be them. dropping after Bridget's birthday, but because we're recording it on her birthday celebration day, drop a happy birthday, Bridget, in the comments. Happy yeah. birthday. Wait, no. We don't have to write to that. I know. For he's, he's, for he's, he's a jolly good fellow. <laughs> for poor cheesy. For uh, she's a jolly well. good Fine. fellow. Cottage cheese, a gala jolly good fellow. A gala jo fellas. <laughs> a jello is for she's a jellical cat. <laughs> she's a jellical cat. All right, can we be yes. done? <laughs> then nobody can deny. Meow. Okay. Meow. Adios.